wanted to tell you. There's a
worshiping nature? Why are they worshiping nature? His nature calls us to worship. His nature is worshiping. His nature is worshiping God. Good night of living. Don't worship the mountain. The mountain is worshiping God. Amen. Worship God. Praise Amen. the Lord. Because he's worth it. Really I, I, I heard a story that resonated with me uh, earlier okay. this week. So there's a there's a boy and he's 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 in a sailing ships and so he takes his, his little toy boat, you know, sets up to sail and he sets it on the water and he's watching it he's watching it go away because the wind took it really quick and he goes, Oh wow, the Lord's really moving my my little boat and he sees that he's gotta go to the other side of the pond to go pick it up. So he runs as fast as he can, and the boat's coming to him. And a big gust of wind just comes over and sinks his boat. And he goes, Lord, it's a good day to fly kites. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, you know, that, that resonates with me so much because I got so many plans and things that I want. And it, like life, just in the Lord, he goes, you know, it's not today. It's not for today, you know. Uh, but go go and fly a kite, you know, do something different. I got a different direction for you, you know, and I, I like that. I want to be moldable, you know, I want to change with whatever God's season is. Anyway, so thank you, Lord. Amen. I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Very good. You want to be moldable. That's why we say, Lord, prepare the He's encouraged us. I pray you don't leave here the same today. I pray you leave here changed a little more like him. Amen. 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 Fill, fill to the brim. I don't want your cup half empty, half full, whatever. I, I want to be completely overflowing. Overflowing. Yeah, we have to have a good perspective. See it half full, but not today. We want it overflowing. Surely goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life. We dwell in the house of the Lord. And we have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And out of, the Bible says, out of our belly flows rivers of living water. If it's flowing, it's overflowing. Amen. It's bubbling up over. I want the joy today. It's not by might, not by power, but it's by your, his spirit. And I pray his spirit moves in a mighty way in each one of your lives. And each person that's uh, watching online. Praise God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. If you're downhearted, discouraged, downcast, feeling less than, well, God's going to put you over today. Amen. 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 He's going to give you what you need because if God is for you, no one can be against you. Even if everybody's against you, God's for you. He's there. You and God are a majority. He's holding you up by his mighty power and his mighty hand, and he's going to take you forward. He's going to move you forward. He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the understanding. He's going to give you whatever you need 
to be success, to be prosperous, to overcome and be healthy, and to be victorious. Amen? Amen. I encourage you. Yeah. yeah. I encourage you to be, be uh, continue to be focused. Don't give up. Don't give in. You may bend, but you're not going to break. Amen? Amen. Because you got, you got the spirit of the living God within you. Hallelujah. You got something to praise him. So I'm sure there's somebody that's got somebody to pray, some, something to praise God about. Do we have a praise report today? This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we, we're, we, we're willing and obedient today as we give. Just be, continue, just be obedient to whatever he tells you to do. And uh, delight yourself in him. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Uh, no matter what you give, it will be given back unto you. You can't out today, you can't out give the Lord, no matter what you do. Today, here in church, there out in your daily life, always just be giving, be kind, reflect the love of Jesus, and you can't lose. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father, for this uh, offering today. We thank you that it will go where it needs to go. It will do what you called and planned it for it to do. I thank you, Father, not one dollar will be wasted, but the funds will go to... Uh, help people and help uh, bring people to you. I thank you for this, Lord Jesus. I thank you for meeting every need of this church. Thank you for meeting every need of the people in this congregation. I thank you, Lord, that no, we don't have a lack. You meet all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And I thank you for this today. And everyone said, Amen. 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 And amen. We'll just pass the basket there. The basket's on the move.
hear like in speaking, if you don't grab their attention right off the bat, you lose it. So I just figure I'd be silent and see what happens. I like to go. I like to go against the grain. I like. Yeah. To, I like to test things out. So I hope I haven't lost your attention already. Actually, you've gotten better. You've gotten better. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Uh, by any means necessary today. By any means necessary. God wants you well, spirit, yes. soul, and body. Mm -hmm. And how come there's so much stuff going on, and I don't seem to quite, uh, I, there's things I want, but I just kind of fall short of it. It's, it, it. We have to just fight the good fight of faith. We have to plant those seeds. Miracles, your miracle is contained. I want to tell you, every, God wants to move mightily on your behalf, just like he did 2,000 years ago. He wants to move. Some people say, no, he just doesn't go do those things today like he did yesterday. Then why does the Bible say he's the same today? He, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. If God doesn't change, we need to change and forget the, the lies that have been told through religion that says God doesn't do certain things. God does this, but he doesn't do that. Or it's not for today. We need to just crush that and cast it away and get a fresh visualization of who Jesus is. Amen. Like Amen. I've said in the past, it's a simple. People make, uh, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. It's a relationship with Jesus. And sometimes we complicate it. It's all about loving God, loving people, loving yourself. Amen? Amen. And if we want to walk the way Jesus walked, we need to do the things he did. He spent time with his Heavenly Father. If we spend time with our Heavenly Father and uh, meditate on his word, Psalm chapter 1 says you meditate on the word day and night. Does that mean you have to be in front of the book all day and you just sit, up, <laughs> sit in a chair and do nothing? and become so spiritually, mind, spiritually minded, you know, earthly good? No. <laughs> you, you, you meditate, you think about it, like when you're going about your day. What do you need? All you need is one word from God. Think about it, meditate on it. Uh, the Bible says to think on those things which are good and pure and lovely and a, a good report, and the God of peace will be with you. Mm -hmm. Why do you keep saying that miracles are contained in the seeds of his promises. That just sends, it just, it just doesn't become real to me. I just don't understand it. Well, then you need to understand what the word is saying and how important uh, his promises are, how important his word, his word, you know, I mean, we'll take, we'll, we'll take the word of the doctor a lot of the times and we'll, he'll say, you need to take this medicine. And most of the time you'll take the medicine because he took his word for it. How much more so that our the, the, our living God, the heaven, our heavenly Father, when he had he puts things in his word, tells us what we have, what we need to do. We should take his word for things and just simply do what he he tells us to do. Amen. 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 Because his word, his word, heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall remain the same. What do you mean? How? How can the word be a seed when it's planted in our heart and produce a harvest? Well, I want to see. I know people go through things. They have infirmities. There's sicknesses. There's uh, life. Stuff happens. So what do I want to see? I want to see people more healthy, mm -hmm. strong, full of vitality, strength, and power. So how do I see that happen? I start planting some seeds. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And today I pray that I convey to you seeds of his, of his healing touch. Because mm -hmm. his word is a seed and it will produce a miracle in your life. Uh, 1 Peter First Peter chapter 1, verse 23, 22. 1 Peter 1, verse 22. Since by your obedience to the truth you have purified yourselves for a sincere love of the believers, seeing that you love one another from the heart, always unselfishly, 
seeking the best for one another. The, the truth through obedience purifies you. Walk in the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But how do you do that? For you have been born again. You have been born again. Everybody say, I'm born again. I'm I'm born born again. again. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. Jesus. He's alive in me. He's, He's alive, alive in me. me. You've been born again. That is, you've been born from above. Think about this. You've been born from above. Spiritual. This is the Amplified now. No these and thous. Wow. We're straight up today. Spiritually transformed. Renewed. Spiritually transformed. Really, get a hold of it. What do you got? You've been spiritually transformed. How, I don't know. My mind is like, I think, I know I love Jesus, but my mind thing maybe thinks things I shouldn't think. That's why it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you've been transformed when you were born again. That seed of the gospel concerning salvation was planted in your heart. You acted on it. You became saved and born again. You've been taken from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light because of that one promise you heard. Mm -hmm. That promise, which was a seed that somebody planted in you, and it produced a harvest, and your life has never been the same. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Now you can plant those seeds on a daily basis and plant them in your heart, and it'll transform your mind and you'll conform, you have your spirit, and then you have your soul, and then they'll get in agreement, and then you, you bring your, your flesh in line, and then you walk as Jesus walked, and you do the things he, he, he did. The, and what does the Bible say? The works that I do, you shall do, and greater works shall you do. Mm -hmm. All right? Because, why? Because the seed has been planted. The work has been started, and God says in his word, when he becomes a good good work he will continue it and bring it to completion mm -hmm. but the point is today the word the promise is a miracle and you can plant it every day in your life and it can bring about a harvest and you can see a change and when you don't see a way in your life and, and the, it looks bleak in the natural that's when you dig in and dig into the word and find those promises that you need you need healing Find those promises. Oh, come on, Jim. The word, a seed, can't be that powerful. Well, it says right here, you've been born again. That is born from above. Spiritually transformed, renewed, set apart for his purpose. Not, a, not of seed, which is perishable. He likens to it as a seed. It's not perishable, but from that which is imperishable and immortal, that is through the living and everlasting word of God. What do you have sitting in your lap right now? Or on your cell phone? You have the word of God. It's not corruptible. It's incorruptible. It's eternal. It's powerful. Why does it say in Hebrews chapter 4 that the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword? Why does he say that? Because it's ever living. The word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word dwelt among us and became flesh. Mm -hmm. Everything Jesus is, is wrapped up in His Word. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, it is. You can't deny the truth. Truth is truth, and that's the truth. And if you grab hold of it, it'll set you free. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, we're all cool with salvation. You, sin separates us from God. The wages of sin is death. And we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. But Jesus came. He bridged the gap. We're all good. Salvation. But then healing. What's part of salvation? Salvation. If he conquered sin, defeated sin, that was the cause of sickness and disease. But if he took care of the sin problem that happened, that started with Adam and Eve through disobedience, through one man came sin and came to the human race through the obedience one through one Jesus Christ came grace and mercy comes new life and we're free from sin mm -hmm. and out of sin came sickness and disease and poverty well sin's been conquered defeated and because of that those stripes are laid upon Jesus that's why he can, the Bible can say by those stripes mm -hmm. you were healed well I don't feel like it <laughs> well that's it we 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 don't deny the problem. We don't deny the pain. But we just continue. We don't quit. We don't give up. 
We keep it the pearl of great prize, the seeds of his promises, and we keep planting those seeds that we need. What, what do you need? Plant the seed. And, and people have kind of tweaked it and perverted, not perverted, that's a harsh word. They've, they've just, it, they liken it unto money. And then everybody's trying to, gimme, 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 my name, my name is not Jimmy. <laughs> no. no, they're like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, please, if you send $5, send $10, or we'll give you this holy blanket and you'll be blessed. <laughs> no, they, they miss the whole, we're all grown up now. We don't have to fall for that shenanigan. <laughs> right? I'm tired of that. Like, I got the, I'm all about prosperity, which is fantastic. God wants you proper, prosperous, successful. Uh, but it's not some magic wand you wave around. It's just his promises in you. And it's a part of salvation. Free from the curse. We have free from sin. Which we're free from sin. Uh, 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 poverty of soul. Poverty of spirit. Poverty of, yeah, of our mind. And materially we're set free. Jesus has paid the price. And it's all wrapped up in the seeds of his promises. And he puts, us out, put it, puts it out on an individual basis where we so many times maybe we look at a TV show or uh, we, which is great you look at the sermons on TV or you listen but we have to pursue it and take hold of it ourselves and pl find those seeds find those promises because the, the seed of his word is incorruptible and, and it cannot be squashed it cannot be defeated and it it, it, it changes the landscape of our life Yes, amen. 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 If you don't like the, what's on the canvas, you can paint a new picture amen. through the promises that become a part of you. The very the engrafted word of God. It says you purify yourself. You purify your, the the word purifies. And then in verse, chapter two, uh, the living, uh, like I said, for you've been born again. That is the word from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, set apart for his purpose, not of a seed that is perishable. Everything else in the world is perishable, but we have something that makes the difference. That's why it says in Romans chapter 8, the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. That's why it says it, because everything in this life is winding down. But Jesus is, Jesus and God is revving up. Amen? Amen. We're, we're not going, we're going, right? Amen. Amen. You, you've been spiritually transformed, renewed, set apart for his purpose, not of a seed which is perishable, but from that which is imperishable and immortal. That is the, through the living and everlasting word of God. That is through the, that is through the living and everlasting word of God. I'm going to say it one more time. That is through the living and everlasting word of God. It's just a book. It's on the shelf. No, don't. <laughs> Dust that thing off. Find yeah. those promises. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If it, because uh, I share today because why do I share? So everybody can listen to me? No. I'm sure I'm just here. So God, he put me here. And what do I want to see? I want to see everyone healthy, strong. Life is imperfect. But there's only, there's someone who is perfect. And will perfect his life in us. But we have a part to play. And we can play that part. We can be genuine. We can be humble. We can... Get in his word. Take a little time a day. Meditate on it. And we can be that tree that's planted by the river, water, river of living water. And when the storms of life come, we're, we're not just a hearer of the word. We're a doer. And the wind may blow, but we're, our house is standing strong. Because it's built upon that rock. Amen? Amen. And then we say, who? Devil? Who? What? Ah, he's a, he's a, toothless lion that, and he's making some noise but I'm standing strong because I have the ever living, ever powerful word of God and it's a part of my life because I am a child of God. I am a I, I'm a 
king and priest in the kingdom of God. I know who I am. I'm not someone going under. I'm going over. Amen, Sheila? That's right. We're going over. We're, yeah. we're going somewhere to win. Amen. Sit it, sit it. And all flesh is like grass, all the glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. When the word empowers you, you're like an energizer bunny. You take a licking, but you keep on ticking. Right? Good news. So set aside every trace of malice and all the deceit, chapter 2, and hypocrisy and envy and all slander and hateful speech. Like newborn babes, you should long for the pure milk of the word so that you may be nurtured and grow in respect to salvation So you can grow to respect of salvation. If, if in fact you've already tasted the goodness and the gracious kindness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now that I've said that, the word, I continue to say the word is powerful. Second, Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. His divine power has bestowed on us absolutely, absolutely everything. What does everything mean? Everything. As his divine power is bestowed on us, absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through, through tr true and personal knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and excellence. Today you've been called. For by, those, by, for by these he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promises of inexpressible value. He's bestowed on the seed, the word of God, miracle wrapped in the seed, his precious promises. It says right here that of uh, inexpressible value so that by them you may escape from the immortal, immoral freedom that is in the world because of this reputable desire and become sharers of his divine nature. In King James, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We can be a partaker of his divine nature. Why? Because we have the incorruptible word of God at our fingertips, and it can be planted every day in the, in the soil of a heart, and we can see a harvest. What kind of harvest do I want to see today? I just want to see continued healing, health, and wholeness in your life. Yeah. Healing. And then you go out there and share with people you know are hurting. And you can provide healing. You know what the word says concerning healing. Well, maybe it's not God's will to heal some and maybe not others. Well, if it's not God's will for you to be well, it would be wrong to seek, seek recovery through natural means. Right? Oh, that's true too. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. If God did, so yeah, maybe God is teaching me something through this. Mm -hmm. So God uses sickness to teach you something, so you can be more humble. When it talks about chastisement in the Bible, it's not talking about laying sickness. I mean, you chastise your kid, but you're not going to put his hand on the hot fire or something, right? <laughs> so if it's so maybe God's trying to teach me something. Then why do we go to the doctor and try to get well? Then we're going against what maybe God's will for us is. Right? Well, that just doesn't make sense. Why is that? Because it doesn't make sense. Right? Mm -hmm. It's just somebody that just made up. No. God wants us well. God wants us healthy. He wants us strong. He wants us to be healed. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace. What does it mean, the chastisement of our peace? Well, there was enmity between us and God. There was a, 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 a gulf, and it was called sin. But Jesus Christ came because he's the way, the truth, and the life. And he destroyed the power of sin over our life. He provided a, for a, a way for us to have access with him. So we're free from sin. So if we're free from sin and we can be walk free every day, do we sin? Of course, because life's not perfect. But we, if, we, if we ask for forgiveness, he's just and faithful to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. So if he can free from a, 
our sin. Oh, wait a minute. God can only do so much. He can't do too much. <laughs> That's it. we got to stop there. No, if he's redeemed us from the curse, isn't it a curse not to feel well? Mm -hmm. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh -huh. Is God the thief? No. He, is he, he's not the devil, is he? Mm -hmm. We don't got it all mixed up. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How God anointed Acts 10.30, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Is God with you? Amen. Yes. He wants you well. He wants you here. But there's so many things that happen that I don't understand. I don't understand, but I have to go to the word and to speak the truth. Amen? Amen. Otherwise, we get downhearted. We get discouraged by life and the things that happen. But we want to be filled with joy and we not want to overflow and we want to know who God is and what does God actually stand for. He... God actually stands for love because God is love. Love and compassion and mercy. He didn't have to send Jesus, but he did because he loved us. And what did Jesus do from he, when he was here? He set people free from sin. He said, go, sin no more. He set them free. What did he do with the, the, the blind beggar, Bartimaeus? He healed him, right? Yeah. He, he didn't say, no, just suffer in your... And you'll learn. You'll learn your place. Did he do that? No. He said, Bartimaeus said, Have mercy upon me, thou son of David. Have mercy upon me. And Jesus said, What do you want? I want to see. And then he just said, Thy faith has made you whole. Mm -hmm. Faith. Faith is a grain of mustard seed. Mm -hmm. Do you have faith as a grain of mustard seed? Romans chapter 12 said, Every man, every man, woman has been given a measure of faith. You have that seed of faith on the inside of you, and you can believe, you can believe. How, how far can you believe? The Bible says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or reason according to the power that's in us. Mm -hmm. He can do exceedingly above. To, according to the power. How big do you want to believe? How much do you want to receive? Well, I want to tell you today, his promises contain some miracles you need. And if you pursue him each and every day, a little, just have Maybe those 10 go-to promises, they'll change your life. Amen? Mm -hmm. They'll be a, a part of you. And then when you hear an evil report or a bad report or a negative report, you don't deny it, but you, your brain, to, oh, it's done. So, oh, this is what I got to look forward to? No, you, your heart and your mind just click. Wait a minute. Wake up. I got the truth. I, I'm not, it's not based on the natural Man, I could walk in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. What is supernatural? It's natural, but it's super. Right? <laughs> it's, it's possible. But God can work in the impossible. Amen? Amen. He can take the believers. Oh, this is how it is. No, he can take us to the next level. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? It is yes. awesome. And you can partake of that. By his, through his divine nature, we are given exceedingly great and precious promises that by these we can become a partaker of his divine nature. What do I want you to hear today? We're coming in for a landing right now. <laughs> but maybe, maybe it's just not God's will to, maybe he wants me. He, maybe it's just not his will for me. Maybe for the other person. But it's not me. We already settled where he's trying to teach us something. That's no good. We're not going to fall for that. Right? You hear that? Don't mm -hmm. fall for it. Mm -hmm. God wants you well. He wants you healed. He wants you strong. He wants you full of vitality. Well, don't people suffer for the faith? Uh, they're not. If we did a word search, well, we don't have time today. We su people suffer for Jesus, but that's talking about persecution. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about sin. It's not talking about sickness. It's not talking about poverty. Persecution. There are people, yeah, we're blessed, but some people that know Jesus can be persecuted. We know mm -hmm. that for a fact in other countries. Right. But today we're talking about healing and health. Now we settled that fact where he said, well, we settled that fact that maybe he's teaching. He's not teaching us anything. 
He, he wants to bless us. He, that's what good news is about. But we come to the point where is it maybe he does is it his will to heal me? Well, the only place in the Bible that talked about that, uh, Matthew chapter eight, when Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him, and a leper came up to him and bowed down before him, saying, "Lord, if you are willing." Sometimes that's us today, Lord, if you're willing, because we don't really. Sometimes we don't have maybe have a. A good picture of our Heavenly Father. We think He's trying to teach us something. Or Jesus. And, we, and our brain is thinking all these things. But sometimes we just need it settled in our hearts. And hopefully the day I settled it today, the leper came to Him and bowed down and said unto Him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to make me clean. Mm -hmm. As we come to the Lord, Lord, if you're willing, if we were that person, come to the Lord, if you are willing, you could help me in this situation. What did Jesus say? Jesus reached out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Mm -hmm. Immediately the, the leprosy was cleansed. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus do? He reached out to him. When you reach out to Jesus, he'll reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Because he is willing to heal and mend. <clears throat> Does it happen all at once? For this guy, this person it did. But a lot of times, Sometimes, on a daily basis, we plant the seed in a heart. There's several farmers in here. We're all rancher or farmers. We know how about planting gardens, planting seeds. Amen? Yeah. We plant a seed, it takes time. We plant the seed of a promise, maybe of healing, health, and all this, and then maybe the next day. Well, I guess God's not moving. <laughs> I still feel terrible. It's just, and then how can then you're double minded but then a double minded man is unstable in all the ways let them not expect to receive anything but if you're double minded you don't receive if you're single minded and stay focused and fixed and hold on to that promise it will change your change your landscape of your life whether it's spiritually mentally or physically mm -hmm. amen? Amen. amen no matter how small it is well I feel a little bit better well that's great that's progress Amen? Amen. Take every every small every small thing and take it as a win and keep moving. But don't let it stop. Once you get that momentum, keep moving forward. Amen. Amen. Well, I felt good. I got prayer and everything's great now. Well, you're gonna the devil's gonna challenge you the next day, so you better be ready. And then oh I feel it again. Well then you know, oh I guess it didn't work. No, then you just come back because you got that promise, that eternal living word of God. No, devil, you're defeated by his stripes. I'm well. Jesus defeated you on the cross, and I'm walking it out because thanks be to God who gives me the victory through my Lord, and I'm not stopping. I'm moving forward, and I'm not going to quit, and there's no quit, no how, no way. I'm going to keep moving till I see Jesus face to face, and then I'll I'll take it easy on you, devil. But until then, I'm, I, I, you're not coming for me. I'm coming for you because I'm just getting fired up. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Jesus said, I am willing. And then he, and, and he went into Capernaum, Capernaum and then he met a centurion, another healing miracle. And it goes on down and it goes to Matthew 8, 17. <coughs> 8 16 when the evening was come jesus wound up the day and when the evening was come they brought unto him that were all that were possessed with the devil and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick mm -hmm. what's the bible say he healed all that were sick i'm gonna say it one more time for the camera he healed all that were sick wow it's done it's a done deal no more that was back then Jesus Christ, same, same today, same. yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. His Holy Spirit's still moving. That it might be fulfilled in uh, verse 17, which was spoken by Isaiah the promise, prophet, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Mm -hmm. We have to get it fixed in our mind. We do not deny the circumstances. That's a problem. Sometimes uh, faith, we hear about faith and it becomes dry. It just becomes a formula. But no, 
Our faith is vibrant. It's alive. We're just coming to the place of the simple gospel and we realize that Jesus did, conquered sin. He defeated death. What Adam stole, was there any sickness in the Garden of Eden no, no, before he no. disobeyed no. God? No. no. He sinned and through sickness came the curse and sickness and disease and poverty and they had a good thing. They lost it, but Jesus bought it all back. Amen? Amen. He paid the price that it might be fulfilled. He was wounded. He bore our sins. 17. I'm going to read it in the... Uh, that it might be fulfilled in the Amplified. When spoken by the prophet Isaiah, himself took our iniquities upon himself and carried away our diseases. He carried them away. When pain, sickness, try to latch its hold upon you, you fight it. You fight it. You fight it off. Do you still go to the doctor? Sure, you go to the doctor, you take the medicine. But we pray over it. Amen? Mm -hmm. anyway, everything and anything and everything, we do it as unto the Lord, realizing His promises and realizing by any means necessary, God wants me well. Right. The doctor said this. Well, Jesus bore it. He took upon Himself. We have it fixed in our mind. We have it fixed in our mind that if Jesus bore it, I don't have to. Ouch! I have pain. Well, Lord Jesus, you bore it upon your yourself two thousand years ago. I don't have to walk walk in this healing. Again, I'll say it one more time. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes, we are healed. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who forgives all our iniquities. Wow, he forgave my sin. But he also says, don't forget his benefits. He forgives all our sins, and he heals all our diseases. What is that seed? It's a seed. It's a promise. It's incorruptible. And where, whereby by these promises we become, Second, Second Peter chapter 1, we become a partaker of that nature that he purposed for us before the foundations of the world were formed and that's why he sent Jesus. Amen? Amen? To help us through this life. When we're feeling down, we're feeling weak, we feel like, hey, ouch, life is getting the better of me, we can rise up, take hold of his promises, dig in and say, no devil, this is not your day, this is my day, my time to shine, I'm gonna be strong, I'm gonna be healthy, even if I feel pain, I'm not denying the pain. I'm just focusing on the pro promise, not the promise, not the uh, focusing on the promise, not the problem. And I'm going to keep planting, planting it in my heart, meditating on with my mind, in my mind. And uh, I'm going to be like a tree that's planted, strong, healthy by the rivers of living water. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Amen. Amen. You're plugged in and that water and that new life, strength, power, healing flows through you. You're staying connected because he's the vine, we're the branches, right? Mm -hmm. Stay connected. Power in his word, power in his promises. Miracles contained. You plan it, you, you'll see it, you agree with it. It's a done deal. Amen. God's good to his word. The devil's a liar. He's under your feet. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And anytime when we're weak, he's strong. God is strong <laughs> in us, strong for us. And he'll do exactly what he said he will do because we have a relationship with him because of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have that new covenant and it's all ours because we are children of the Most High God. Hallelujah. And that is, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, that is good news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for touching each in person here, each person on, that, on, the, on the video. I pray, Lord that it just sinks deep within people's hearts. They realize that you are our healer, our health, our wholeness. You redeemed us from the curse. You've set us free. We are a partaker of the divine nature. We just have to pursue it. We got to get hungry for it. We can't let up. We need to just continue to move forward with you and you'll do exactly what you said you would do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all these people here today, moving and ministering to them in a mighty way, in Jesus' name, amen.